I'm Bobby J. Welcome back to the channel. If you're a guy like me, you're a guy with a truck, or maybe even two trucks or seven trucks. And the thing is, we're a one man show, right? We can only drive one at a time. So inevitably, you're going to have some of those extra pleasure vehicles. They're going to do more sitting than anything else. So what I've got for you is I've got five tips on help to help keep those pleasure vehicles in the best shape possible and I'm gonna pull a YouTube classic on you. You're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end to get to number four and especially number five because those are the two big ones. Number one on the list is definitely the least important, but it's worth mentioning, which is keep the vehicle clean. Yes, yeah, some of that is self-explanatory, right? But yeah, it is, seriously, keep it clean because paint, paint longevity and everything, paint likes to be clean, um, especially if you have the vehicle parked. If it's parking spot happens to be near where there's a lot of foot traffic, say like garages and stuff, uh, parked next to another vehicle, you know, getting in and out of the other vehicle, the kids, all that stuff, jackets get rubbed up against the vehicle and they, you know, don't realize it. You know, you don't want a thick layer of dirt on there where you have the more potential of creating those, uh, you know, light scratches and that sort of thing. And the interior too, it's important to do the best that you can with keeping the interior clean. Um, in overall longevity, carpet, for example, carpet will last a lot longer if it's kept clean and not filled full of dirt. Uh, dirt collects moisture, Mo moisture causes mildew, mold, all that sort of thing. So keeping it clean is worth mentioning. The other part of that about keeping it clean is what it does subconsciously is a clean vehicle creates more pride in our minds, right? And the more pride you have for that vehicle, the better the chances are you're gonna take better care of it. So there's this kind of a psychological factor there on keeping things nice and clean and tidy. Now, number two on that list is rodent control. Yeah, rodent control. I mean, nothing is worse than getting a mouse or even a rat in a vehicle and I have fortunately had very good luck uh, with not having any of those issues but I am pretty proactive I will say on it I did have I will tell you this about a decade ago I got a mouse in my 06 mega cab and it died and I tell you what never found never found the body uh, never found anything couldn't find it looked for it because it was nasty that truck stunk for two months inside and so after that it's like no got to always make sure rodent control is somewhat of a priority so and me personally um, I feel like trying to control rodents in the general area is almost more effective than the vehicle itself and what I mean by that is you know your garages your sheds uh, that sort of thing Make sure you're putting out bait or traps and you're trying to control your rodents on the property itself or the general, like I said, the building itself rather than trying to treat the vehicle itself. You attract those rodents to the bait that's over in the corner of the shop, over at a bait station, whatnot, something like that. You're going to attract them to that and not necessarily the vehicle itself. And number three, you saw this one coming, batteries. So the third best thing to do is disconnect the batteries. You know, at least then you remove that connection and, and save those batteries. The second best thing would be to drive it frequently enough where you keep the batteries charged up. Uh, but the first best thing you can do is run a battery maintainer. Uh, 
I do that with a couple of different things. And it's really nice knowing that when you fire that vehicle up, you've got fresh, full batteries ready to go. You know, and if you got aftermarket stuff, you got a good stereo or whatever in the vehicle, you know, you feel like you can turn it on right away. And I'm like, oh man, I better let the batteries kind of charge up before I really, you know, work that alternator hard. And so, yeah, keep it plugged in. You know, in uh, these modern vehicles with computer controlled engines and stereos that have memory, all this stuff has memory, right? And if you let stuff go dead, you're resetting your stereo settings. Computers, like I said, they have memory that they need power for. So invest, they're not very expensive. Invest in a small battery a charger slash maintainer and plug it in when you are not using that vehicle. And number four. Number four is don't go too long without driving it. You gotta drive them. You know, if you're gonna let it sit too much, you're gonna wind up with problems. Frequently driving it, even if it's just once a month, makes a huge difference. You know, of course, engines need to be ran and warmed up and all that stuff, but another one is brakes. You know, brakes also need to be cycled, warmed up and whatnot. If you don't drive it, that's how you wind up with sticky dragon calipers and brake problems and all sorts of things. So that is, it just that's how equipment and vehicles are. You've got to use them. And if you don't use them, you're gonna lose them. So like I said, a few miles here and a few miles there go a long ways in keeping problems away, making those oils circulate, those that coolant, all those fluids, it's good for seals, it's good for everything. There's a lot of little trips that we do here and we do little trips there and whatnot and just think, hey, you know what? I better jump in the 92 or the 98 or whatever it is that your vehicle is. You know what? I need to run to town and, and run to the post office. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and take it. A short little drive will go a long ways. Number five, and this one is a big one, and it is also the most difficult one, but you get the most out of this one. Number five, keep the vehicle inside. And I can't stress that one enough. You know, coming up with the very best, of course, is a full-on four-sided garage where moisture's kept out and there's no sun penetration or anything, that is by far the best. But you know what? Even a roof, you know, a pole barn, a carport, anything to get a roof over that vehicle makes such a big difference. I mean, you know, you spend the time to restore a vehicle and fix it up and everything, Mother Nature will take it right back from you, just give her time. So, and all those things like tire longevity, brakes, uh, you know, condensation with oils and fuel and that sort of thing. Having that vehicle inside solves a lot of that. So, if you've got the space, build that carport, build that lean-to, build whatever you need to do to get that vehicle that means a lot to you out of that weather because that will, that one thing will guarantee that it stays in good shape for a long time coming. Hey, now I thought I'd throw this in there. Don't be afraid to be creative. Trees, trees that are non-sappy, that drop a ton of stuff. Good trees are a great way to get, capture some shade. Another thing is, is alongside buildings, depending on what the exposure is on the building, sometimes if you've got a tall barn, a tall shop, you can get a vehicle alongside that shop on the right, on the correct side, and you can get quite a bit of shade during the day in those spots. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope this is a little bit informative for you. Some of this stuff, of course, a lot of car guys know. Maybe I shared a few things that you didn't know. So if you enjoyed it, like this video, please subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.